Welcome to the HPC Best Practices webinar series, which is brought to you by the Ideas Productivity Project, which in turn is part of the Xscale Computing Project of the United States Department of Energy. This webinar series is a collaboration that involves the computing facilities at the Argonne, Oak Ridge, and Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratories. I'm Mosley Marcus from Lawrence Berkeley Lab and uh, Ashley Barker from Oak Ridge and I will be the hosts for today's webinar an overview of the Raja portability suite. And the webinar will be presented by Arturo Vargas from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Arturo is a computer scientist in the application simulation quality division at Lawrence Livermore. He completed his PhD in computation and applied mathematics at Rice University in May, 2017. Arturo's work focuses on portable programming abstractions, high performance computing, and high order finite elements for hydrodynamic applications. We have issued uh, 160 actually more tickets for this webinar and all attendees have been muted. Uh, we'll be receiving questions through the Zoom chat and also the Google Doc. I have already pasted this address in the Zoom chat, but I'll do it again. And the webinar, the webinar will have breaks so the speaker can respond to the questions that come in. With this, Arturo, I'll stop my sharing and you'll take over, please. All right, well, thank you so much. Um, let me share my screen here. Uh, okay, um, can everybody see my screen? Yes. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm here on behalf of the Raja Portability Suite team uh, to provide an overview of the different uh, technology we've been developing. Um, so. <clears throat> the Raja Portability Suite is a collection of modular open source tools for developing single source portable codes. Uh, there are four main projects and throughout the talk, I want to give a little tour of each of them. Um, so there's Raja. Uh, this is an abstraction layer for developing portable kernels based on loop level parallelism. Uh, there's Empire, uh, which is an API agnostic tool for memory allocations on, say, host and device. And you can do very intricate operations, such as creating memory pools. Uh, there's Chai, um, which is an array-like object, which automates move, moving data between host and device, device, giving the look and feel of CUDA unified memory. Uh, and then there's CAMP. Uh, this offers low-level metaprogramming methods focused on HPC compiler com um, compatibility. Um, and all of our projects are hosted on GitHub, so folks uh, are all welcome to grab a copy and, and play around with it. <clears throat> uh, so the Raja Portability Suite has been adopted by a number of different projects. Uh, and then on the slide here, I want to highlight some of the ECP projects that have successfully uh, adopted Raja, Umpire, Chai, or a combination of um, uh, into their code. And they've been using uh, this technology to run on a variety of different platforms. Um, so. As examples, there's the Livermore ATDM uh, application code. So this is a high order L hydrodynamics code. Uh, there's Geos X. This is a geomechanics code. Uh, there's uh, EXA SGD or power grid uh, optimization simulations. And then there's ECP. Uh, I'm sorry, there's SW4, <clears throat> which is a code for uh, simulating earthquakes. Uh, so these codes have run on different platforms, uh, for example, Sierra, Astra. Uh, and a lot of them, and these codes are on track for uh, the upcoming uh, platforms such as Aurora um, and Frontier and Akapitan. <clears throat> uh, Rajan Umpire has becoming the programming abstraction of choice for most of the ASC applications. Uh, so the chart here um, presents a list of different projects, uh, the main uh, language they're written in, uh, their kernel abstraction, um, <clears throat> their data transfer, a strategy and memory allocation. And one of the things we see here is that across the board, uh, Raja and Umpire are used across, the, across these projects. Um, there is some diversity on how uh, data gets transferred from the host onto the device. Um, some will use um, explicit movement, uh, some will use unified memory, and some will use chai. Uh, and this is just based on uh, code constraints and uh, the preferences of the code teams. 
uh, so starting with Raja, uh, Raja's collection of abstractions for loop level patterns and parallel constructs, uh, there's support for simple complex loop patterns and executions. Um, there's uh, support for multiple backends, uh, for example, sequential, um, OpenMP, CUDA hip. Um, and uh, through Raja, there's capabilities to do loop transformations uh, without changing the application code. So examples of this is uh, changing loop iteration patterns, permuting uh, loop nest ordering, um, as well as their support for uh, portable reduction scans, uh, atomic uh, operations and, and sorts. And then there's additional um, tools in here that help uh, improve uh, general application performance. And I'll give examples of this. And of course, there's always ongoing work. <clears throat> uh, so as a starting point, I, I wanna introduce this uh, Raja for all method. Uh, on the left-hand side here, we have a C style for loop that uh, computes a dot product, and then on the Raja, and then on the right-hand side we have the Raja equivalent. And I want to walk through a, a couple key differences. Um, so one of the notable things here is that on the right we we introduce this concept of uh, this execution policy, and uh, the idea of the execution uh, policy is it it governs how the code will be dispatched. So examples of this is you can have um, like an OpenMP execution policy or CUDA uh, execution policy, and then the code will be uh, dispatched through um, uh, a parallel region in OpenMP or through threading in CUDA, for example. <clears throat> uh, another subtle difference is the uh, the introduction of this uh, dot um, uh, object here. So this is a reduce sum uh, object. And the reason that this is introduced is um, when we're doing accumulations in thread environments, we have to be careful that um, we're not overwriting uh, our data. So um, this reduce reduce sum object will take care of uh, any race conditions for us and make sure that we get the right answer. Um, and of course, there's this for all method here, and this is our generalization of the for uh, <clears throat> the for loop. Um, so uh, a little bit of details of of, of this particular method. Um, so the anatomy of these Raja methods is that they have four main concepts. Um, there's a loop execution template method. Uh, that's the four part of the code. Uh, there's a loop execution policy, which uh, basically governs how the code will be executed. Um, and then there's this concept of an iteration space. So the iteration space corresponds to what the loop will traverse over. And lastly, there's the loop body. Right, and this is encapsulated into in, inside a, a C++ Lambda expression. OK, so um, at this point, I, I want to pause for a bit and, and invite uh, questions from the audience. Keep going on. Go on, please. OK. All right, well, thank you. Um, so uh, I want to return to uh, Raj in a bit, but I want to introduce now umpire and Chai. So um, as I described, uh, Raja brings loop level parallelism to applications, uh, but when running on the GPU, we have that additional detail of having to move data between the host and the device. Uh, so Chai is designed to complement uh, Raja and transfer data behind the scenes automatically at runtime as needed be be between the host and device. Uh, so as, as an example of this, um, this code snippet here illustrates allocating arrays on the CPU. And then once a GPU kernel is encountered, uh, Chai will recognize this and trigger um, the movement between the CPU onto the GPU. Uh, the actual data movement is actually done through umpire. So under Chai, it's umpire performing the uh, CUDA uh, allocations and, and movements. Uh, Chai is just there to orchestrate this. Um, and then once the data is on the GPU, we do our calculation. And then when we return to the CPU, um, Chai will recognize that data is needed back there and will move the data back onto the CPU from the device. Um, in addition, Chai uh, introduces the concept of a managed pointer, which simplifies the use of virtual classes uh, across hosting device. Um, so for example, um, uh, <clears throat> we have an object here called shape uh, with a virtual function uh, called process data. Um, through the use of uh, this managed pointer, um, developers can um, 
can seamlessly move the data between the host and the device without having to explicitly express the, the CUDA mem copies. Um, so one detail about this is that this feature does require the objects to have a uh, host device class uh, constructors. So uh, under Chai, uh, it sits umpire, as I mentioned. Uh, umpire is there to perform the memory allocations to make to perform the moving the uh, copies or whatever uh, it may be. Um, uh, so umpire has really unique capabilities. Uh, you can construct memory pools. Um, so with a memory pool, this enables you to draw memory faster than say uh, using um, uh, malloc and CUDA malloc. And this is a neat tool for sharing um, <clears throat> Uh, memory between different application components. Uh, and there's also the capability of doing introspection. Uh, so through umpire, you can ask questions such as, um, what is the data associated with this pointer? Um, how much memory uh, is the data using? What is the size? Um, uh, questions of that sort. Um, and the beauty of umpire is that it provides a simple API for managing memory from different implementations and hardware. So by using umpire directly, developers can easily maintain fine-grained control of how memory is allocated and specific memory movement details. Uh, the umpire API is simple and only has four core concepts. Uh, there's this concept of a memory resource, uh, which specifies what kind of memory um, is being allocated, a uh, memory allocation strategy. Um, so through an allocation strategy, you can choose from uh, allocating from a pool, um, using an allocator that's thread safe, uh, specific algorithms for particular allocations, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then there's the allocator. So with the allocator, this is how you do your, your allocations and freeze. Uh, and then there's this concept of an operation. So the operation is, some, is the action you do with particular uh, data. For example, copy, move, um, sending the data to a value. And these concepts are all coordinated by this resource manager. So earlier I mentioned that umpire memory pools may be used in a large multi-physics uh, code to coordinate device memory sharing uh, between physics packages. Um, and to illustrate this, uh, I, I wanna consider a physics code A with two packages A and B. Uh, we can also call them states. So in a typical application, uh, there tends to be a loop between the different active physics. Um, there will be an A phase and a B phase that are separated by um, uh, some time step. Um, and without the use of a memory pool, um, you know, one may be tempted to have each of these states uh, allocate their temporary memory and hold on to it uh, throughout the, uh, the course of the simulation. But this uh, really limits the amount of memory you can have per each state. Uh, so here on the right, uh, here's an example of uh, using an umpire memory pool. And with the uh, umpire memory pool, we have the capability to create um, a generic pool where each state can take turns uh, using the pool, uh, drawing to and from the pool. So for example, in the A phase, uh, the A state is free to use all of the memory. And then when it's done with it, it can return the, return the memory back on to the pool and then the uh, B state can uh, take over and use uh, the memory. <clears throat> uh, so just as a quick summary of umpire, uh, umpire is a, an API for uh, general memory management. It's composed of very intuitive concepts. Uh, it supports uh, various memory types, uh, for example, host, uh, uh, GP, global, pinned, um, unified memory. Uh, and it's very, um, it offers features that are very useful in HPC applications, um, such as uh, creating these memory pools, um, doing these queries, uh, providing thread safe allocators um, and memory introspection. Um, there's native interfaces for C++, C, and Fortran, uh, and there's a lot of uh, useful tools for, um, for debugging, such as uh, logging and backtracing, and you can also replay the different memory allocations uh, that you've performed through umpire. Okay, um, uh, I want to take a little short break. Uh, any questions? Yes, I see a question here. I think the, the Raja team has been answering some of the questions as we go, but there is one here. How does it work for next for nested loops? Oh, that's the next part of our talk, actually. All right. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I'm sir. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy they're asking. Yeah. All right. Okay. Please continue then. Thank you. All right. Yes, of course. Um, okay. So uh, returning for returning to Raja, uh, I want to introduce two APIs for 
nested in uh, complex loop kernels. Um, so we started the discussion on, on Raja by introducing two uh, loop, by introducing loop level parallelism for a simple loop. Uh, but for nested loop patterns, uh, we may want some, some flexibility uh, and maybe expose more parallelism. Uh, so to kick off this discussion, I, I want to use this matrix matrix multiplication example uh, to explore some of the Raja features and usage. So uh, the example I have here above uh, is a simple matrix matrix multiplication uh, kernel and multiplies two square matrices A and B and stores the results in, in C. <clears throat> uh, so um, building uh, from the for all methods, uh, we may be tempted to replace the outer C loops uh, with Raja with uh, for, for all methods. Um, however, the issue here is that the for all methods uh, treats each loop level as an independent entity, uh, meaning we can parallelize each level of the loop, um, but one of the levels would be running sequentially. Um, additionally, if you want to do like loop interchange and other types of code transformations, that would require source code changes, which uh, breaks the Raja encapsulation model. Um, so for this reason, we, we don't recommend uh, using Raja for all methods for nested loops. <clears throat> Um, but one option in Raja for nested loops is to use the Raja kernel API. Um, so uh, the Raja kernel API is designed to compose and transform complex parallel kernels without changing the source code. Um, so how the code will be uh, executed is expressed in, in a particular policy uh, as illustrated here above. And this policy will typically live in a header file. And then in your source code, uh, you would have the collection of loop bodies. Uh, so to help introduce uh, Raja kernel, I, I want to make some uh, analogs uh, between standard C code and how you would express this in Raja kernel. Uh, so here on the left, um, we have the uh, two outer for loops from our matrix matrix multiplication uh, example. So uh, to express this using Raja kernel, uh, you would express for loops uh, as these statements. Um, and then for each uh, for loop, you have an associated policy that will essentially dictate how the for loop will be uh, executed. Uh, and then for each level of the loop, uh, you have to have an associated iteration space. The integer value here corresponds to um, which uh, iteration space in the tuple um, is associated with uh, that for loop. Uh, so performing loop transformations uh, using the Raja kernel API is is uh, pretty simple as the policy controls how each loop level is executed. Um, so in the example here, but uh, in, in the slide, um, we have the outer loop being the row loop and the inner loop uh, being the column loop. And if we wanna do loop interchains, uh, you just switch the order of the statements. Um, so here, the result of this is that the outer loop is now the column loop and then the inner loop is now the uh, row loop. Um, so then to actually invoke the loop bodies, uh, lambda statements are using the execution policy to invoke the lambda. Uh, so here in our policy, um, we're saying we have two for loops and then we have a lambda statement which executes the actual work. The lambda is, the contents of the lambda are, are held here in this kernel method. Um, and as you can see, the, the loop body is exactly the same um, as you would have in the standard C code. Uh, so just as a quick summary of the Raja kernel capabilities, um, this kernel API offers numerous uh, options to explore execution alternatives and optimization strategies. So there's, there's things like tiling statements. Um, so these are, uh, <clears throat> this is a technique that takes an iteration space and breaks it up into tiles. And this is a, this can ensure that data stays in fast memory while it's being used. Um, there's access to portable kernel local memory. Uh, this would be CUDA shared memory on the GPU using NVIDIA or stack memory on the CPU. Um, there's capabilities to do loop interchange via execution policy change as, as we saw earlier. There's also support for things like loop vision and fusion. Um, and then when it comes to GPU programming, there's a variety of policies to help map loop iterates to GPU blocks and threads in different ways. Okay. Uh, so another way to express nested loops is uh, with Raja is through the new launch API. Um, and I want to point out that this is uh, now available. Um, it is marked as experimental as we're still refining the, the API a bit. But uh, Raja launch works differently than kernel as it creates a kernel execution space for developers to write in. Uh, so as a quick overview, uh, there's three 
um, components I, I want to highlight here. There's this launch method, and then this uh, launch method uh, sets up a kernel execution space for host or device. Um, so you also have a runtime selection of running the kernel um, on the host or the device based on the value here, um, execution place. So the job of this launch method is just to create um, a general space for folks to write um, their code in terms of these nested loops. Um, there's also this launch context. So the role of the launch context is to um, control flow within a kernel. So <clears throat> the launch context can be used to uh, perform thread synchronizations. And I do want to um, uh, highlight um, some, something about the capture types. Um, so in <clears throat> the execution uh, space, uh, we have this outer lambda, which captures uh, things by value. And it's designed this way to make uh, device copies of captured variables. Once you're inside the um, actual execution space, uh, your loop methods will take uh, lambdas to capture by reference. And the reason we have it this way is uh, to enable re uh, referencing within the loop hierarchies. Um, <clears throat> so uh, to um, further uh, explain the, uh, this Raja launch API, I want to make some analogies between standard C loops. Um, so within the kernel execution space, uh, developers can express their loops with in the execution space through these loop methods. Um, and this is different than how we would do things in kernel um, as we're now encapsulating the, the loop hierarchy in the execution space. But uh, anything that you would express in terms of for loop um, would simply become a, a Raja loop method. Um, and of course the, the loop body just transfers over, right? And everything stays in, intact. <clears throat> Uh, for GPU execution, uh, we try to follow the same programming model introduced by CUDA and HIP. Um, we have the notion of, of teams and threads, which is our equivalent to CUDA and HIP blocks and threads. Right? Um, and for this reason, sometimes we'll call this API Raja teams. Um, so loops can be mapped to either uh, teams or threads using these loop methods. Uh, and then when running on the CPU, uh, these uh, loop methods will fall back and and be executed as, as standard C loops. Uh, so just to illustrate on, on how computing with uh, teams and threads works, uh, it's, it's basically the same thing as you have in, in CUDA where you have a compute grid uh, composed of threads and then the grid group into blocks. Um, same thing here. Uh, so with this configuration, we have um, three teams composed of three uh, threads. And this is how we would do our, our calculation in the GPU kernel. So like other Raja constructs, uh, policies are used to choose how the code will be executed. Um, the launch and loop methods differ uh, to other Raja constructs as they now take a, a, both a host and device policy. And by taking both, both a host and device policy, this enables the API to have two versions of the code uh, ready. So developers uh, and users can choose between running the code uh, on the host or device at runtime. Uh, so this is illustrated here on this particular slide where uh, we highlight the different policies. Um, and then for the policies, uh, for example, for the launch policy, we would provide um, a host or a device. Um, and likewise for the row and column, uh, which uh, dictate how the code would be executed. Uh, currently we have support for um, uh, sequential um, on the CPU, OpenMP, and then on the device, uh, we have support for CUDA and HIP, right? And, and um, as we're developing our code, you know, you can mix and match um, whichever uh, policies you want. <clears throat> uh, so for the next uh, set of slides, I, I wanna uh, just uh, make some comparisons between how matrix matrix multiplication can be expressed using CUDA uh, and uh, Raja team semantics. Um, and of course, throughout my uh, slides, I want to also report the runtime to give an idea of what kind of performance differences might be observed um, when using this Raja Teams or Launch API. Um, so one way to perform matrix-matrix multiplication is uh, to consider a 1D compute grid of both uh, blocks and threads and choosing to map um, the rows to blocks directly. And then for uh, the columns performing like a, a grid stripe loop uh, and then performing the, the dot product. So uh, the Raja analog of this is just to um, actually ask for uh, this uh, 
a threading strategy through a policy. So if you want to map things directly, you just use these direct um, policies. And then if you want to perform loops, uh, like we see on the left-hand side with CUDA, um, you just use these loop methods. Um, and then you express your code just in terms of nested loops. Uh, just to illustrate the difference in runtime here, um, this was actually a surprise for me, but we actually found that the CUDA version, I and mean, then the Raja version was slightly faster. Um, I don't have a good explanation for this, but it was a nice surprise. <clears throat> Um, another approach to perform matrix matrix multiplication is to um, consider a two dimensional grid of threads and then uh, use these threads to perform uh, DAW products. So this would require um, calculating uh, global indices. So say I want to map the rows to uh, the global thread index in the Y dimension and then the column um, for, to the global index in the X dimension, right? So that requires doing this type of calculation. The, the Raja analog of this is you just ask for the global thread. Um, you can do it for the X and the Y uh, accordingly. Um, and then something else I want to point out is that when you're doing the calculation uh, in CUDA, you would have to do uh, these bounds checking, uh, but we wouldn't have to do that in the Raja variance because these loop methods actually uh, take care of uh, out of bounds indexing for you, right? So these loop methods make sure that we're only uh, indexing within the row and column range uh, accordingly. Um, and again, I, I'm reporting the runtime here, and then we found that um, <clears throat> for this value of n, the, uh, the performance was within 2% of the native CUDA implementation. Okay, um, so this is a more uh, intricate e example uh, where we're using shared memory and we're loading data into uh, shared memory to do the matrix matrix multiplication. Um, it is a busier slide, but I, that what I really want to point out is that I think the features um, such as shared memory and thread synchronization also exist in, in uh, this Raja launch API. Um, so to perform, to do shared memory CUDA, uh, we would just use a, this shared uh, annotation. The analog in Raja is just to use this uh, Raja team shared um, decorator. Um, and this will do the right thing when you're running on, on the CPU as well. Um, this will just be a, a CPU stack memory. <clears throat> and then uh, this particular algorithm requires thread synchronization. And I, as I mentioned before, we can use the Raja launch uh, context to perform uh, synchronizations within um, uh, <clears throat> uh, teams of threads. Uh, so to do that, we would just call it a team sync method. Um, and lastly, uh, the runtime. Um, the runtime here is within 5% of the native uh, CUDA implementation. Okay, uh, so here I, I want to take a quick pause. Uh, is there any questions that I can uh, answer? Uh, we are good. There are questions coming in through the chat, but I, Rich has been taking care of them. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's real time. <clears throat> All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. So um, more than a basic loop uh, abstraction layer, Raja provides other mechanisms to improve uh, application performance. And I, I want to give a quick tour of, of some of these capabilities. <clears throat> uh, so one of the newer features in Raja is the ability to do uh, asynchronous uh, kernel execution with Raja, Chai, and Umpire. Um, and as an example here, uh, for folks who are familiar with CUDA streams, um, <clears throat> we can create uh, different CUDA streams using this uh, Raja uh, resource tool. And by uh, creating CUDA 1 and create CUDA 2, we're essentially creating two different streams where we can launch kernels. And the work will be done uh, independent of each stream. Um, so just an illustration of the, of the mechanics of this, <clears throat> um, we can have, uh, we can supply our for all methods with uh, these resource objects and then treat them as events. And essentially by treating them as events, we can create um, a queue of activities for the, uh, for the streams. And we can also use these wait methods <clears throat> to orchestrate how the kernels will be executed. Uh, for example, here, we, uh, we instruct uh, stream one to wait on event number two, which happens on a different stream. Um, and of course, this can be <clears throat> integrated into uh, your existing Raja code. Um, you can have your for all methods just execute, specify on which stream you want to uh, uh, have them act on. And whenever we encounter activity on the CPU, we, we make sure that all the data is, uh, is 
has been executed and is available um, for uh, com computations on the CPU. Um, Raja also has an API for fusing kernels, so they are executed uh, within a single kernel launch. Uh, so this is a very useful feature for applications who have to do packing or unpacking of Halo data. Um, so <clears throat> one approach, which is uh, a less efficient approach on the GPU, would be to consider uh, different fields that you have to pack and then packing each of these fields um, into an API buffer uh, in different kernel launches. So here we're doing multiple kernel launches uh, to pack our MPI buffer. Um, we, you know, we found that a more efficient way of doing this is having a single kernel launch uh, that does all of the packing for us. Um, this, is, this approach is, is very useful because it, it lets us overcome uh, this kernel launch overhead that we, we see with uh, very small kernels. Um, as an illustration on how this would be done without kernel fusing, uh, the code on the left illustrates what um, a, a typical application code uh, may do. Um, so for example, for your different MPI, na MPI neighbors, um, you would loop over your different fields. And then when you're doing the packing, um, you would be performing um, all of these kernel launches. So you're doing the packing on the GPU. Um, and then you would uh, send all the name, uh, then when your MPI buffer is packed and then you would send uh, the data. Uh, the more efficient uh, approach uh, through, through Raja would be to use this uh, Raja work pool um, uh, object. And so this lets you essentially uh, create a queue of different kernels that you want to invoke in a particular kernel launch. So we create a list of, uh, of kernels. Um, and then when you're ready to actually launch the kernel, kernels, um, you, you invoke the run method. And then rather than invoking multiple kernels, they all get packed together. And then uh, in a single kernel launch, all of the work gets done. And then once um, you do that, you're, you're free, to free to send the data through MPI. <clears throat> so this is a technique that's uh, helped a lot of the application uh, codes um, improve their performance by, by 5 to 15%. Um, so as we're developing the Raj API, we're, we're also fairly mindful of potential overhead we introduce. Uh, so to monitor uh, potential performance overhead, uh, we use the Raj performance uh, portability, the Raj performance uh, suite, and this is a tool that we use to um, look at compiler performance and collaborate with vendors. Um, so anything above the line um, is a, a speed up that we see when we're using the Raj variants, and then anything below uh, would be like a slowdown. Um, the, the, the key takeaway here, though, is for, that for a variety of different kernels, um, the Raja performance uh, stays within 10% of almost all of the suite, uh, all of the kernels in the suite. Um, and lastly, the, the Raja launch or the Teams API um, that we introduced earlier was um, code developed within with one of the Livermore uh, at, uh, applications, the, the Marble team, to be more exact, right? And, and this is a um, this is an API that was uh, developed uh, to target more of the kernels that uh, come up in high order finite element applications. And in developing this uh, API, uh, we worked with the MFM team and we uh, looked at a, um, a fairly optimized uh, CUDA implementation. Um, and the plots here illustrate uh, performance for the throughput performance for a particular finite element kernel. The different lines correspond to the different orders. Um, and of course, higher is better. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, through uh, through iterations and working with them, um, we were able to refine the uh, the Raja Teams API to uh, essentially provide on par performance to a, a CUDA um, impl native CUDA implementation. And of course, with the Raja Teams variant, you we also have the CPU implementation as well. <clears throat> um, so I, I really want to highlight some of the accomplishments that the ECP applications um, have been showing uh, through their adoption of, of Raja, um, Chai, and Umpire. And um, I, I want to highlight uh, some of the speed ups that the different teams have been reporting. Uh, so the Livermore ATDM application, the high order L hydrodynamic code, uh, this is a code that uses Raja and Umpire. And they've been reporting um, some really good speed ups on, on Sierra. Uh, so Sierra's are the GPU machine. <clears throat> They've been reporting the 15x speed ups versus a commodity um, uh, system. And 
they've also been recording a 30x speed ups uh, on Sierra versus uh, Astrum. So this is an example of an application code that also um, integrates with a math library. Um, and another example of how we work with teams to with application teams to to add new capabilities into Raja. Um, so a, a second example of an ECP application uh, is uh, SW4, right? So SW4 is used for uh, high resolution earthquake uh, simulations. And this is a code that uses um, Raja and Umpire. Um, so they've been able to uh, achieve um, 16 and 32 X speed ups on Sierra compared to um, commodity systems. Uh, their work has been highlighted in uh, the Bulletin and Seismology Society of America. And this code is on track uh, for running on AMD uh, and Intel GPUs. Uh, another application I want to mention is uh, GeoSux. Uh, this is a code that uses um, Raja Umpire Anti. Um, and uh, through some hard work, uh, they've been able to uh, achieve some uh, really good speed ups on, um, on Sierra. So they've been reporting uh, 14x uh, speed ups on. Well, I should clarify, they, they're run, running on Lassen, but this is essentially the same architecture as Sierra uh, over a commodity system. And they're on track uh, to be running on thousands of, of GPUs on Summit. Um, and then uh, an application that most recently adopted Raja is the Exa SGD application. So this is a code that looks at this power grid optimization. Um, so they integrated uh, Raja and Umpire roughly eight months ago, but uh, within that time frame, they're now showing that uh, their key kernels are running at near peak memory bandwidth um, with very little specific uh, uh, tuning. And they have parts of their code running on Tulip, um, which is a frontier early access machine with good performance. Okay, um, is there any questions I, I can answer? No, I think you can continue, Arturo. Because All right, thank you. Things are going well here in the chat. Thank you. All right, awesome. Um, so, so the theme here is really what, what drives um, the development in Raja is, is very much the needs of the application, right? We, we work with large integrated codes uh, with many modular uh, packages and, and we, you know, we know that these codes have to run on a variety of platforms and are under continuous development. Um, in working with these applications, we found that the Raja uh, portability suite um, enables applications to be portable and high performance. Um, you know, it, it enables uh, code projects to keep programming specific concepts out of their source code. Uh, but we found that Roger is very flexible um, and our code design approach has led to very nice outcomes. Uh, in particular, you know, people are finding that Roger is easy to leverage, easy to grasp, easy to integrate, and easy to adopt incrementally, which is uh, very important for codes that are under continuous development. Um, we also, you know, uh, as I mentioned, there's, there's been a lot of work that has gone into these applications to, to make them performance, and um, it does require a good plan, right? Uh, some of the things that we've been learning is that um, developing a plan is really important, uh, in particular, making sure the plan is agreeable to all developers, um, understanding uh, the meaning and how to manage portability, right? Like how much of the code needs to change. Um, uh, develop, uh, choosing the memory management strategy. Uh, we saw that different uh, code projects take different approaches, right? And, and this could be because of the constraints of their, of their code. Um, some, some things we've also learned is that uh, what's really important is data structures and how you're accessing your data. Um, you know, we found that it's best to keep the code clean and uh, data access as, as simple uh, as possible. Um, there's also approaches where folks were like to um, maintain a particular field to the code. So folks will introduce um, a, a code specific wrapper um, around uh, Raja. Um, and this helps them create more of a domain specific languages. <clears throat> um, it's also important to establish a, a, a good performance expectations. Uh, so what this means here is, uh, is understanding uh, the your, your kernels, um, are, are your kernels going to be memory bandwidth band? Uh, are they gonna be compute bound? Um, you know, what are the appropriate uh, types of optimizations that can be made? Um, of course, uh, it's 
it's best to always try to port some code, analyze performance, and then optimize as, as needed. And, and this is very much an iterative process. Um, we highly recommend uh, continuously monitoring performance, right? If, if you have a CI process, um, you can make this part of your uh, as as part of your process. Uh, something else that we've learned for good performance on GPUs is to keep the data resident on the device. Um, too much memory, uh, too much movement between the host and device uh, really impacts performance. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, we also highly recommend for, uh, doing focus optimization efforts. So taking the code, understanding where most of the time is spent um, and, and focusing the effort is there. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm showing all these results, but I do want to highlight that this was very much an iterative process. Um, a lot of these teams have been working on uh, porting to GPUs uh, for some time now, and there, there has been a lot of progress, but uh, there's always a work um, ahead of them. Um, so programming on these GPUs also have considerations that are typically not seen uh, on CPUs. Um, for example, current, uh, GPUs have this kernel launch overhead. Um, so there's also the fact that there's different memory spaces now, um, host and device memory, right? So there's an, there needs to be an appropriate strategy to move the data uh, accordingly. Um, and then GPUs tend to also have less memory than uh, CPU-based platforms. Uh, so for this reason, we, we really uh, think memory pools are a must. Um, and then for folks who work on very integrated codes with uh, different packages, uh, there's the there's a component of uh, coordination, right? Um, if there's packages that are unported, this will lead to costly CPU and GPU data transfers. <clears throat> so the Raja portability uh, suite has demonstrated utility on, on current architectures and is on track for uh, future platforms. Um, so just to highlight some of these uh, upcoming machines, um, for the Perlmutter machine, um, which has NVIDIA GPUs, uh, we have the CUDA support and this CUDA, and the CUDA uh, backend is actively being used on, on production codes on, on Sierra at Livermore. Um, so we continue to investigate and improve performance for the different, for the uh, CUDA backend. Uh, for AMD uh, platforms such as uh, Frontier and Al Capitan, we have HIP support um, that's been available for some time. And then for um, the Aurora machine, uh, which has Intel GPUs, uh, we have the Sickle backend in current development. Um, and this is collaboration uh, with uh, Argon, and this is part of an ECP project as well. Um, but the support for Umpire for Intel GPUs is, is there now. Um, so I, I do want to mention that we are fairly active. Uh, we uh, have over 38 contributors and there's eight core team members. Uh, we also stay engaged with vendors and we stay up to date with um, the newest features um, and capabilities. Uh, we also participate at conferences, ECP meetings, um, uh, all sorts of things. Um, and just to start wrapping up, um, so, so why use portability solutions like Raja, Umpire, or Chai, or you know, should you? Well, the answer is it depends, right? Um, it does require understanding or having a grasp of what performance portability means for your project. Um, if you have a very small code base and, and you're interested in the best performance ever with very specific um, uh, programming model features, then you know you may prefer to to rewrite the code uh, with the different programming models. But um, if if you have a large application um, with various uh, contributors. Um, Portability solutions uh, like this is, is really the way to go, the way to go right? It, a portability solution like this will enable you to write a single source code that runs on a, vari on a diversity of platforms. Um, you know, some of the benefits of, of a portability solution uh, like this include um, that you don't, you no longer have to worry about platform specific code, right? We can essentially eliminate that. Um, it's also, um, easier to separate uh, software development concerns from your project. Um, you know, you can create abstraction layers. So folks who are more interested in developing uh, physics uh, can work on that. And computer scientists can focus more on the fine grain optimizations. Um, and you also leverage the expertise and efforts of, of the other folks, like for the folks who work on Raja, right? As, as we're making uh, Raja um, better and faster, um, 
your application will definitely benefit from this just by um, up, uh, updating your, your Raja uh, package. Um, and just uh, some links uh, to, to help people get uh, started. Um, there's user guides for Raja and Umpire. Uh, there's the there's templates available um, uh, through GitHub. Uh, there's a performance uh, suite that's, that's also on GitHub. We have proxy apps. Um, and then also just a, a small plug for CARE. And CARE is a project uh, that uh, expands on Chai and Raja. And it, it adds uh, additional capabilities um, for folks who are, are interested in, in building on Chai and, and Raja in their application. Um, and of course, uh, for any questions and support, uh, please email us at rajadev at livermore. Doc of. All right. And with that, I conclude. And, you know, if there's any questions that I can answer, I'm more than happy to. Okay. Thank you, uh, Arturo. Very nice, uh, time wise, even. I think uh, uh, I'd like to tell the participants here that we're going to take the uh, all the questions and answers in the chat and consolidate them and do some cleaning and put in the QA document that we'll send to you um, maybe early next week. But Arturo, to give you an opportunity to answer some of these questions here, let me go to the bottom here. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'll take this one here. What is the difference here between other approaches, for example, Cocos? Um, so uh, the, the approach here is that this is more modular, uh, right? There's you can pick and choose which components you can add uh, you want to integrate into your application. Um, and then uh, for some uh, of the nested loop capabilities, you have more fine control of how you want to map uh, loops into threads and blocks and into GPUs and, and things like that. So uh, it, I would say it's a, it's, it's a different approach um, to, to solving the same problem. Okay, so what I just did here, so participants, if they can ask, if they would like to ask a question, but I just, you know, participants can unmute themselves now, if they so wish, and ask questions directly to Arturo. Uh, let me go here and see if there's any other here. Let's see. Okay, let me pick one here for you, Arturo. Aurora is an Intel machine. Intel already has one, uh, one API. What are the advantages of using Raja and, and, and Chai in that case? Well, the advantage is that if you use Raja and Chai, then you have a, a single code, then you can then run on say uh, NVIDIA platform with a native CUDA implementation. Um, and my understanding right now is that CUDA is probably gonna give you the best performance on uh, NVIDIA platforms. All right, another one here for you. I'm going from the bottom, actually. Are there any recommendations for tools that measure performance that, that integrate with CI? Would something like Tau HPC Toolkit work? Um, I, I don't, I can't speak to that particular tool, but I, uh, I've used Caliper in my, in, in the application I work. I've, I've uh, had great experience with Caliper. Um, so I, I recommend Caliper. Uh, uh, maybe maybe if folks have other recommendations they can also um, recommend. Okay, um, folks, any other? Okay, there is one, one that just came in here. With the abstraction layer as Raja, are you running into compiler limitations in uh, specifically with any VCC where the extended Lambda is very heavy on the symbol generation? Um, uh, yeah, so there's there has been compiler bugs that have come up, but we, we work uh, with the vendors um, and we, you know, these are things we work through with them as well. All right, so again, to the participants, you are, you you can unmute yourselves if you'd like and ask questions directly to to uh, to our tool. Any takers? <laughs> um, as I said, I'm, we are going to take the the chat and uh, 
and go yeah, to I it. had a question. Uh, oh, better okay. Clear. Uh, it's it's very, very, okay, very impressive, very impressive talk. Uh, uh, more related to uh, this ability to asynchronously move memory around. So does the chai and umpire take advantage of that? So when you are running multiple kernels and at the same time, we always oversubscribe the GPU to some degree because the memory is more limited than on the CPU side. So is there any machinery built into these managers that can basically benefit from these asynchronous memory moves? Yeah, so the example I showed, uh, yeah, it's designed to be, um, uh, to work in conjunction with Chai and Umpire. Mm -hmm. And the granularity is in general on the whole array level or do you go sub array? So can you page in, page out the blocks that are currently being used? Uh, the blocks, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Like the blocks so when, of memory or? Right, right, right. So when, when uh, typically in all, all, all these LIN, uh, all the uh, solvers, when the discretization is being processed, so the, the memory is being fed in sort of in pages. So is there anything sub array level or is it is the minimum unit the whole array, the whole mapped uh, object? Um. I'm actually not sure. Uh, uh, Rich, would you would you be able to comment on this? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I can comment on this a little bit. So this is Peter Robinson. Um, the Chai, for instance, is kind of array based for bulk memory movement, but it does have like a pick capability to like pick single elements if you need to do that. Um, but generally speaking, it's taking the approach that um, the whole array is what you want to deal with. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Peter. Any further questions? All right, very good job, Arturo. Yes, and the, the folks that helped with the questions and uh, the answers also in the chat. Arturo, I'm going to take then the, uh, the uh, if you can give me the share, I'm going to share my screen here, okay? Okay, uh, here we go, stop sharing. All right, all right, so uh, it's just to announce, uh, again, so thank you very much for participating. You know, we'd like to improve the series. There's the, the survey that I think would be helpful for Ashley and I, the organizers of the series, but also to the uh, presenters in the webinar series. Uh, the slides and recording will be available at these two addresses. They're actually, the slides are already available. I pasted in the chat where the, the link uh, so the next event in the training uh, effort of the Exascale Computing Project, March 30 to uh, April 1st, we have the ECP Community Birds of a Feather days. It's an opportunity for the high performance computing community to engage with the ECP teams to discuss the latest developments of, by the teams. People can register at this address, I also pasted there in the chat. And again, just to make it clear, this, uh, uh, this event will not be recorded, okay, contrary to the uh, webinar in the series. And the, this, the, the next webinar in the series is going to be on April the 7th, a workflow for increasing the quality of scientific software. It's going to be presented by Tomislav Marik from Technical University of Darmstadt in Germany, and uh, people can uh, register for that webinar already. So uh, with that, Thank you all for joining. Thank you very much, Arturo. Ashley, do you have any final uh, remark for? Uh, nope, just add my thanks to yours as well, to Arturo, and, and then the Herculean effort from Rich to answer all yes, those questions absolutely. in the chat. So we really appreciate getting those answers real time. I think that um, the attendees appreciate that too. So thank you. Thank you both. And Osni, thank you for organizing. It was a pleasure. Thank you, folks.